What's up guys, Jeff Pelzer here at 18 Strong, and today we're gonna talk about why your stretching isn't working for you. If you are like many of the golfers that I've, I've dealt with, they have been stretching for years, whether it's their hamstrings or their shoulders, doing the same old stretches year after year, putting in a lot of effort, putting in the time, putting in the effort, but not seeing the results that they want to. And there's certain reasons that that is, is probable. And so we're gonna walk through a few of those. I'm gonna give you a demonstration of a hamstring stretch just to kind of walk you through the procedure that you can use that's gonna be way more effective. It's gonna take up less time in the long run um, and you're actually gonna see some results from this. So a couple things that I've noticed that people are doing that isn't the most effective way to stretch and that's first of all doing a lot of passive stretching. So passive stretching would be where you're on the ground, you've got somebody stretch like just pushing your leg up into a stretch position you feel the stretch it feels like you're doing a lot but in the long run it's not actually going to produce any long-term results there are even facilities that just have you come in you lay down they stretch around on you and it feels great but you're not really maintaining any of that extra flexibility or what we're really looking for is is mobility and there's a difference between those two so first thing is just doing a lot of passive stretching the other issue is you're not holding it long enough when you are doing passive stretching. So passive stretching can be a good thing, and I'm gonna show you how to use it properly, but if you're not holding it long enough, you're not giving your body enough time to adapt, you're not giving your brain enough time to realize that that's an okay position and then allow you to get into more motion. Same thing goes for the tension that you're putting through that stretch. So a couple things. For a hamstring stretch, I see a lot of folks putting their legs way up high on, you know, a, a bike seat or something like this, and they, they're doing these stretches, and you, you feel the stretch here, of course, but this position is not ideal. It's kind of rocking my pelvis forward, so it's not really putting my hamstring in the greatest position. Then I see him really cranking on this and putting as much tension as possible through the, the hamstring, and then after about 10 seconds, they'll stop and they'll switch. The problem here is, didn't hold it long enough there. And when you put too much tension through those muscles, your muscles are just gonna fight back. So I kind of think of this like, I've got three kids at home and they are, for whatever reason, whenever they're goofing around, they are constantly like trying to push somebody out of the, the bedroom. So one person on one side of the door, somebody else is on the other side of the door, which is completely dangerous and they get yelled at all the time. But I think of this whole stretching thing as kind of like one kid pushing on one side, the other kid pushing on the other side. The harder the one pushes, the harder the other one's gonna push back. So if I'm here really cranking on my hamstring, my brain is gonna say, I'm in trouble, I'm gonna fight that resistance. So you're really just kind of doing yourself a disservice by pushing real hard your brain needs to know that you're in a safe environment in order for it to let that muscle relax. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then the last thing that I find that people have, uh, have not implemented into their stretching is active control. So actually using their own muscles to, to gain that, that range of motion. So this will all hopefully make a little more sense as we walk through this. So a great hamstring stretch that you can do rather than putting your leg up on here, is to get in kind of a half kneeling position, like so, and then just putting your, your heel on the ground out in front of you. Now, if I turn this way, and I like to have something to hold on to also, because then you can, you can really not worry about your balance, but you'll notice I've got a little bit of a bend in my knee here. If I straighten the knee out, I'm putting a lot of stress on the nerves that run down the back of the leg. That's why if you totally straighten your leg and you, you flex over and you feel that zinger down the back of your leg, that's actually you pulling on the nerve. That's not you stretching your hamstrings. So we wanna have a little bit of a kink in the knee. You're gonna have the heel on the ground. And like I said, you don't have to have your foot raised up real high. What you're gonna do is just hinge at your hips, kinda of stick your butt up in the air a little bit, keep that knee bent and I'm just gonna hinge at the hips and I have a, a very strong stretch on my hamstring right now. Now you notice I'm not creating a lot of tension, I'm not putting a lot through it. All I'm doing is getting to the point where I'm, I'm letting it stretch, the hamstring is feeling the stretch,
but I'm still in a, a relatively controlled and comfortable position. Now, I mentioned the time frame of holding this. I want you to hold this for two minutes. Studies, are shown, or studies have shown for a long time that two minutes is kind of like the magic number where it gives your brain enough time to realize, hey, okay, I'm safe. I'm going to let you go a little bit further. Going back to that door analogy, think of you know, like somebody pushing on that door and it almost takes two minutes for the person to be like, oh, hey, uh, oh, Jeff, it's you. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you in. Okay, I'm going to let you in the door. So you're finally letting your brain relax and realize, okay, I'm in a safe environment. So as you breathe, you're going to feel yourself get a little bit, a little bit further and a little bit further. And then after that two minutes, here's the real key to improving this range of motion. So if I am using this as kind of the, the angles that my body is, and I'm trying to basically hinge at my hips and close this down, right? The closer I get this way, the more my hamstring is stretching. So what I'm gonna do is after that two minutes, now I'm in a nice lengthened position. I'm actually in a new position that my body's not used to. So I have to teach my body now to be, to be strong in that new position. If I just gained a bunch of motion, but I never worked on the strength in that new motion, my body doesn't know how to handle that, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give a little bit of a push with my heel into the ground. So now I'm creating some tension through my leg here and I'm teaching my muscles now how to hold and how to, how to create some resistance in that new position. Now as I hold that, I'm gonna hold that for about 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna relax that and now I'm gonna to try to take my chest and I'm gonna to try to flex forward even more. So now I'm actively creating this new, this new range of motion. My hamstring is, strength, is lengthening a little bit more I'm teaching my body how to create this all by itself without just somebody pushing or pulling on me. I'm gonna do that for 10 seconds. Then I'm gonna relax and now I'm gonna push my heel back into the ground again. And I alternate that three times. And what you're gonna find is this might be the most intense stretch you've ever had, but you're not pushing like you were before on those other stretches. So. Again, just to recap, because I know that was a lot, and we'll go into this further in future videos and show different examples of different stretches. But you wanna get to the point where you're stretching, hold that for about two minutes, breathe nice and easy, let yourself feel that tissue increasing in length, and then after the two minute mark, you're gonna create a little bit of a, I like to call it the push-pull, or um, the, the real name is pales and rails through the functional range conditioning system but we're gonna call it just a push-pull, where you're gonna push the ground, or push your heel into the ground. You're gonna feel that kind of turn on down here. Do that for 10 seconds, then you'll relax that, and now you're gonna pull, like you're trying to pull your chest closer to your knee, and you're trying to get your knee closer to your chest without caving down. You're gonna feel that big stretch on the bottom. You'll do that for 10 seconds. And then I would alternate that three times, and then at the very end, just relax in that new position. Hold for about five long, good breaths. And then come up nice and easy. You're gonna feel a lot of improved motion. You're gonna feel a lot of stretch. You're gonna feel that muscle working like you've probably never felt it before. And then do that on the other side. You're gonna start to notice that when you consistently do this, you're actually gonna see improvements in your range of motion. And you're not just gonna be doing the same old stretch over and over again, like you're just banging your head on the wall, like you've been doing for the last five, 10, who knows how many years. All right, if you like these videos, if these are helping, subscribe to the YouTube channel and be sure to go check us out on our podcast uh, at 18 Strong over on iTunes. Train hard, practice smart, play better golf.